The Winyan Titi interview on JKL Live recently was just drama for me and I know for many Kenyans, okay? A lot of things came out very clearly from that interview and of course Machako's voters are not going to come back to their senses. They're not going to wake up and see clearly what is happening. But uh, mine is to point out and to point out without favor and to point out facts. According to my very intensive investigations, speaking to Kadiani constituents, yes, that's the constituency uh, Wavinia Ndeti was representing, her so-called development record is non-existent. Actually, I was very shocked to find out this. But the truth is, it is zero, non-existent. In fact, had Wavinia stood again for re-election, she would have been voted out emphatically. Okay? It is important to note that she managed to make it to parliament with very heavy support from that river area, which is more or less cosmopolitan. And uh, this is probably the same area she's going to rely very heavily on, on August 8th, during the general elections. Okay? But deep in the rural areas, deep in the rural areas, there was the people there are very upset about a vineyard deity. In fact, as she stands up, she stands for governorship. Just watch the votes come in from rural Kadiani. They will be very thin or non-existent. Okay? Now, let us very honestly compare that with the short stint which uh, Governor Mutu has had as Machako's governor. Now, according to my own independent research, Governor Mutu has used a lot of his own money for the development in Machakos. Okay? Wavinia well, Ndeti is talking about grant development projects, water projects, etc., etc., and she's going to rely totally on the kitty from the national government. Okay, so what am I saying? I'm saying that if Machako's voters vote Wavinia Ndeti in, of course, there's a case, I'm aware there's a case pending, but I'm just assuming that she will uh, sail through and be allowed to vie for the seat. Okay, that is what my analysis is based on. So assume that uh, Wobinia Ndeti is voted in, the first thing that will happen is that there will be less funds flowing into Machakos. Okay? That is a given. Of course, during the interview, uh, it emerged that Wobinia is very good at um, escaping and uh, avoiding questions. Okay? She did not answer the Athi River scandal deal. Yeah? She obviously, she had prepared very well on the best way to actually evade these questions. In fact, listening to the interview, I had difficulties going through it. I actually tried to view it on YouTube. I had difficulties going through it because it was punctuated so much. Jeff, Jeff, Jeff interrupting uh, Jeff Kwenang every time. It was a very frustrating time for the interviewer. Okay, Interrupting him at every corner so that he was not able to bring out the questions correctly. She was not able to give the answers correctly. So the whole thing turned out into a campaign, a so-called campaign uh, stint or a campaign session for opinion dating. But those who were listening carefully and those who could listen between the lines, it fell flat on its face. That's according to me. The truth is that opinion dating has got no clear agenda for Machakos. That is the truth. Okay? Because what she talked about in the interview, water projects, she knows water is a major project in Machakos. Water is a major problem in Machakos, sorry. And uh, this is just populist. It is, she just wants to be governor, period. Yeah? And uh, the way to be governor is to talk the right things. Yeah? It's like a man seducing a woman. Yeah? You just say the right things because you know what you want. That's really what Ovinia is, is all about. She just wants to be governor, period. And uh, there's very little substance apart from that. I'm sorry to say this, and uh, but it's the truth. And she played the sexist card a lot. I'm a woman, I'm a woman, I'm appealing to women. I'm a woman, I'm appealing to women. Yeah. So that is what Machako's voters will have to contend with. If they vote her in, they will have to look forward to another five years to, or rather to a five-year stint that is going to be a, dark, a very deep contrast to what they've already witnessed. It will be so different.
it will be as different as night and day. Now very interestingly, uh, one of uh, her criticisms I found very interesting, one of uh, the bubs she threw at uh, Governor Mtua. She said that his, uh, uh, his blueprint and his plan for Machakos County was way over ambitious. Okay? Now, let me ask you a question. Is it a problem to be over ambitious? Is it, is it a positive or a negative? Because what the poor people of Machakos have had in the past from their members of parliament, from politicians who have represented them, is a, a, a complete lack of ambition. A complete lack of any ambitious, actually, a complete lack of any blueprint to improve on the people. Yeah? What has happened is that politicians in Machakos are bosses. Yeah? Period. There's nothing more, nothing more than that. And that's why this area has remained backward. This area has remained underdeveloped. Yeah? And it, it is so close to Nairobi. It is so close to where everything is. There's virtually no excuse. Okay? And many people don't know this, but Machakos has a lot of potential. As Jeff Kwenangi pointed out quite rightly on his show, it has one of the largest rivers passing through the county. But nothing has been done in it. Okay? Now I see I've run out of my time. Uh, please catch this, the second part of this analysis of the Wabinya interview. Okay? Um, <laughs> those, I know there are many of you who don't like it. But those who like it, catch you there. Because I have a few more very interesting things to point out. As usual, point on that, uh, click on that link, top left hand corner, and you'll be there. See you in part two of this.